one AP. First of all, what we're going to do for probably about the next two weeks is we're going to spend going over a whole lot of algebra. Calculus, the general parts of calculus, is not very hard. The new content you're going to learn is not very hard. The algebra is terrible. The algebra is absolutely terrible. So what we're going to review is we're going to view, review some algebra that you've seen before. We're going to spend probably two days on factoring, a day on lines, and cover a whole lot of other things. Um, and then we'll get into calculus probably about the third week of school. So what I'm going to talk about today is we're just going to talk about, in general, factoring. We're going to split factoring up into uh, two days. So today we're going to call this in our notes, let's call this factoring. Day one. All right, well, when you all think of factoring, you remember Ms. Tullis taught you the full list. All right, and the first one you usually think of is GCF, or what do we call that? Greatest common factor. All right, a good example I can come up with for a greatest common factor is if I've got 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 27x. All right, what do I see that's common in all of those? Well, first off, I see an x. I also notice that every single one of these is divisible by 3. So I can quote-unquote factor out or pull out a 3x. Okay, so what am I left with? 3x cubed divided by 3x leaves me with x squared plus, well, 3 goes into 6 how many times? Twice. x goes into x squared how many times? Once. So I've got x left. x times. All right, and 3 goes into 27 nine times. x goes in there once, so I'm just left with that. And I am completely factored. All right, one thing you may not think about is that when it comes to greatest common factor, I can pull anything out of anything else that will be very useful in calculus, okay? Next way we can talk about factoring is factor by grouping. All right. In factor by grouping, you have four terms. Always. If it's not four terms, you can't factor it by grouping. Okay, so an example for this one I would give you is x cubed plus 4x squared plus 3x plus 12. Cover up my first two. All right, so I want to cover up my first two. All right, let's only look at my first two terms. What can I pull out? Well, I can pull out an x squared. What am I left with? x cubed divided by x squared is x. 4x squared divided by x squared is positive 4. Okay, look at my last two terms. What can I pull out? Well, I can pull out a 3. 3x divided by 3 is x, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay, now let's look at this again. What's common in both of these? We're separated by, by a plus sign. Well, I have x plus 4. So I'm left with x, I can pull out an x plus 4. Well, if I pull out my x plus 4, they cancel. What am I left with? x squared plus 3. Now, two more real quick. Most common one that you can always think of is dots. Anybody remember what dots stands for? Tell us type to you. Difference of two squares. And in the difference of two squares, the biggest thing is I have to have 
two terms. Okay? Alright? And those terms have to be perfect squares. Okay? Perfect square. Uh, 16, 36, 9, x squared, y squared, z squared, a squared. Okay? So, let's take a difference of two squares. Alright? x squared, let's just start with x squared minus 1. Do I have a perfect square here? Yes. Yeah. It's x squared. Do I have a perfect square next to my 1? One? 1. Yeah, it's a perfect square. Do I have my sign in the middle? Yes. It is a difference of two squares. So it always factors to x plus 1 and x minus 1. I can also give you something like 9x squared minus 16. Well, is it dots? Has a minus sign in the middle? It's got two terms. Are my two terms perfect squares? Well, yes. So in this case, well, what's the square root of 9x squared? I've got 3x. So 3x here and 3x here. Now, what's the square root of 16? 4. So 4 on my back end. And then I've got plus and minus in the middle. Alright. One more that I'm going to cover is PST. You may or may not remember this. Perfect square trinomial. It's not one you really see very often. But it does show up every so often, so let's take a look at it real quick. Call that a perfect square trinomial. So when I say perfect square trinomial, well, what does trinomial mean? All right, I'm going to have to have three terms. And my beginning and ending term have to be perfect squares. So, let's look at an example. What if I gave you x squared plus 6x plus 9? Do I have three terms? Yes. Is that a perfect, is my first term a perfect square? Well, x squared is a perfect square. What about 9? Is it a perfect square? Yes. So it's a perfect square trinomial. So let's take a look at this. If you factor this normally, which I could, all right, what are factors of 9 that add 6? Well, 3 and 3. So factoring that, I would say it factors to x plus 3 and x plus 3. Well, because we are mathematicians and we are just by nature lazy, why write that as x plus 3 times x plus 3 when I can write it as x plus 3 squared? And that is what makes a PST what it is, is. It is always a quantity or a binomial, meaning two terms, squared. Okay? Let's look at one more. All right? I have 25x squared minus 60x plus... 36. Okay. Do I have a perfect square on the front? Yeah. 25x squared is a perfect square. Do I have a perfect square on the back? Yeah. So that's 6. So let's see. What am I going to factor to? Well, I'm going to have 5x on the beginning. And what's going to be on the end? Square root 36 is 6. All right. Now, in this case, am I going to put minus or plus in the middle? Well, I'm going to put minus in the middle because that middle term is a minus sign. That all on PST, that middle term always dictates what your sign is. And square the very end. 